Hello everybody, my name is Kirby. Today we're actually gonna have a little bit, well, kind of a different episode. We're not going to have a special ingredient today, but we are going to have a special topic. The normal ingredient that we actually have today is this. This is called, well, technically salmon scraps, or as I can say, salmon bones. The topic that we are actually going to be speaking about today is about utilizing food wastages to do something with it. Well then, let's create something out of this. Okay everybody, the normal ingredient that we're having today is this salmon bones or salmon scrap or whatever. The topic that we're actually having today is regarding food wastages. Do you know that every single organism in the world, trees, plants, vegetables, tigers, lions, humans, fish, all of the organisms actually play a role in the ecosystem. But you see, humans are actually the species which actually affects the ecosystem in the world by a lot. And why is that? It's technically because humans actually produce the highest amount of food wastages among all organisms. And I want you all to remember this. As a human, it doesn't really matter whether it's a vegetables or a fruit or a meat. Every time you eat something, automatically you are already causing a problem to the ecosystem. To insult to the injury, humans actually waste a lot, a lot, a lot of food by maybe they actually buy one whole fish, they utilize most of it or maybe half of it and the rest of it they just throw it away. So this is actually an insult to whatever insects or organisms or whatever that you're actually killing. There's actually a lot, a lot of, a lot of reasons on why humans actually make a lot of food wastages. But one of the reasons is because a lot of humans do not know on how to utilize several amounts of parts of the animals or maybe vegetables. So that is why I actually bought this ingredient. In today's episode, I'm actually going to show one thing. How I'm actually going to utilize this product down to the bone. Literally. Well then, let's get to it. Now let's see what is the contents inside this packet, shall we? Okay, let's open this packet up and we'll see what exactly is inside here. This is a salmon bone. You can see here the, the spine and the body part here, most probably the tail part. And uh, what is this? Okay, I can see there's actually a significant amount of salmon meat around here. We are going to scrap all of this out and then we're going to use the bones here to make stock and a sauce. You can see some silver amount of fat here. It's just, well, salmon bones. Right. Let's get to it. So what am I going to do with this? In one of my previous episodes, we actually had an episode where we actually make salmon burger out of salmon scrap meat. Today, what I have in mind is that I'm going to make salmon sausages and then I'm going to use that salmon sausage to make a simple dish called bangers and mash with salmon meat. Let's get this started, shall we? Well, obviously the first thing we're going to have to do is we're going to separate the meat scraps from the bones. I don't think I'll be needing a knife for this, but I'll be needing, well, just a spoon. I'm just going to grab a spoon here and then I'll just like dig every single bit of, wow, that's a very small amount of meat. This is what a clean bone looks like. Pretty much no meat left. Going on with the next one. Next part. It's actually quite easy to strip the meat off the bones. It is really not a tedious work at all. So here you have it, the amount of salmon meat coming out from the bones. Honestly speaking, I think that I actually bought this salmon bones for like 6 ringgit and the amount of meat that I actually got from here is like probably about 200 grams here. I'm just going to weigh this later and then we'll see what exactly is the weight of this salmon meat. And this is the salmon bones. I'm going to use this to actually make my stock later for a very small amount of sauce. Alright, let's see the total weight of the salmon meat that I actually got from the bones. 175 grams. Okay, sure. Well, I guess that is pretty much a significant amount, suitable to be used to make around like one portion worth of food. But anyways, the first thing we are actually going to do is we are going to make our stock. Well, I have my salmon bone right here on the middle of a tree. And the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to add a certain amount of garlic, shallots and well, herbs. You can use any kind of herbs, but I don't recommend rosemary. And after adding this, I'm going to add a small amount of olive oil. And then, I'm just going to mix this. 
And yes, I'm not joking about this. You don't need to peel the garlic skin. Next step is I'm gonna pop this into the oven. So to make the sausage, the first thing I'm going to have to do is I'm going to make a binding agent. Pretty much the same way as what I use when I make burgers. So I'm going to make something a little bit special today. I'm going to combine a small amount of pork meat, pork fat and salmon meat to make a binding agent. I'm just going to put around like 50 grams of pork meat and I'm going to use about 10 grams of pork fat. Salmon meat around 50 grams. And I'm going to put all the meat into a blender. 20 grams worth of breadcrumbs. And half an egg. A pinch of salt. White pepper. Hmm, not bad. Nice color. I'm just going to slice a quarter of an onion. This is the balance of the salmon meat that we had just now. So I'm just gonna give this a rough chop. Don't chop it too finely. Just going like, I don't know. That's all. And I'm going to mix this in. And I'm just gonna add some random herbs. You can use any herbs you want. I actually have the binding agent that I made just now in the blender. So I'm just going to scrub all of it in here and finally just mix. This is it, my salmon sausage filling. Next part, how am I going to turn this into a sausage? First, I'm going to take a very, very simple cling film. You can use any film, you can even use a parchment paper or anything, but I actually prefer to use a cling film. I'm going to make two sausages. So I'm going to use half here. All you have to do is just like that, roll it up. So after a certain period of time, you're going to have to tie this up here. And tie this edge as well. And then this thing actually goes into the fridge. Let the shape set so that when you take this sausage out from the fridge, it will become solid and it holds its shape. Here's the other sausage. Maybe I'll make this sausage a little bit thinner. Okay, so the other sausage is done. Well, needless to say, bangers and mash requires mashed potatoes. I'm going to use chopped potatoes to make mashed potatoes. And this time, I'm going to make it slightly a little bit different. I'm going to make mashed potatoes with skin on and some mushrooms inside here. Cut around like this size, we do This is the same thing. Boil it in cold water. Season the water with some salt. So I'll leave this to boil for about, I can say, 20 minutes. Well, let's start with chopping some garlic for the mashed potatoes. Next, I have three pieces of shiitake mushrooms right here. Okay, there was this. Just a little bit of butter. Now, let's start with some garlic. Adding in my mushrooms. Right, so the mushrooms are pretty much cooked right now. I'm going to add a dash of heavy cream. Around this much will do. In goes my mashed potato. I'll season with some pepper. Salt. I won't even mix the potato really, really nicely. I'm just going to give it a rough mix, that's all. Alright, and here you have it, a really really nice fluffy mashed potato with mushrooms, skin on. And this is roasted salmon bones. The next thing I have to do, I'll just boil this thing with a significant amount of water and then reduce the water. And I'll put everything inside here, it's like one nice crispy salmon. I'll put everything inside here, including the roasted herbs, the roasted garlic and the roasted shallots. This actually smells really really nice. 
I'll boil this, I guess, until I reduce the amount of water by half. And then the stock will have a really, really nice flavor. A few moments later. Well, after an hour of boiling, this is what the fish stock actually looks like. Well, time to strain this. I'm gonna strain the stock. Okay. This is what it looks like. One nice brown color. I'm gonna turn that stock into a classic velote stock. So I'll start with a lot of butter. I'm not going to use a lot, maybe around like a teaspoon of all-purpose flour. So the purpose of this is that I want to make a simple roux right now. It can be a brown roux, it can be a white roux, it can be anything. So this is what a roux is like. And now I'll add the fish stock inside here. Maybe a bit more. Kind of look like caramel to be honest. I'll season with a small amount of pepper, salt, a pinch, a dash of heavy cream. Alright, sauce done. Last but not least, the sausage. It's gonna be really simple. Just put some butter here. The sausage is pretty much already set, so I just have to stick this out. All sides are already cooked. Bangers and mash, all done. Now time to plate. Job well done. I have to say, I did one thing that I really, really screwed up the peas. I kind of like thought about using canned peas for this because it's like cheap. But turns out that the canned peas is like, well, this kind of color. Well, regardless of the situation, well, I can say that the bangers and mashed dish doesn't look that bad. I can say that this is actually the biggest sausage I've seen in a bangers and mash. I think it's a 250 grams total weight sausage, I guess. So, moment of truth. What will this sausage taste like? Oh boy, I can see here. Um, I think I overcooked it a little, but well, I want to see what the whole thing tastes like. The amount of pork fat that I put inside is around like 10 grams. And I don't feel it's enough. There is the flavor, but the more fat that you actually fold inside the sausage or burger, the more juicy it becomes. But this sausage could be juicier. So, if I were to make this again, I'll put around like 25 grams of pork fat. Alright, I'm gonna try the other sausage. Oh boy. Actually, through this, you can actually see like tiny, tiny bits of salmon and herbs inside here. And... Mm. Overall, the sauce synchronizes really well with the sausage. I mean, after all, the sausage and the sauce is both salmon-based. But, if you ask me what I think, I don't really feel much salmon flavor anymore in the sauce. I literally use our ingredient down to its bone today. But to be straightforward and honest, I felt like it's like kind of a waste. I mean, I think that you might as well just use other fish to make the sauce. Oh, man, the mashed potatoes. So fluffy, so hot, and actually so nice. Mm, if I were to make this dish again, maybe I would reduce the amount of the pork meat. The pork meat is actually okay, but it actually covers the salmon flavor of the sausage. Right now, I can see that this bangers and mash actually has like lots of room for improvement, but well, perfection is boring because if something is perfect, it means there's no possible way for you to improve a product. Let's try some sausages, mashed potato, and peas. I don't like the taste of the peas. <laughs> well, that's what you get for using canned peas, but what do you expect? Okay, next time if I were to be using peas again for any of my dishes, I swear I'll be looking for frozen peas. Okay, and here you have it. This is the fantastic dish, bangers and mash. I'm gonna end my review now while I finish this meal.
Oh, on today's episode, we actually used salmon scraps to actually make the salmon bangers and mash. In my overall conclusion, well, it is actually quite feasible. You can actually use salmon scraps to do whatever you want. Salmon burgers, salmon pies, salmon sausages. I mean, there's lots and lots of different types of possibilities of what you can possibly do with this thing. To be honest, I actually don't feel much salmon flavor coming out from the sauce. It feels like a normal, typical fish stock. But <laughs> I'm not sure what else I can do with the bones. When I use the bones to make a sauce, there's just one example of what you can possibly do with it. Yeah, if you have a better idea, please let me know in the comments. Anyways, the reason I actually brought up this episode, which is focusing on using scrap to make dishes, is because I want to help people to figure out how they can use scraps or wastage to actually produce food. Please actually remember this. Humans is actually one of the creatures which actually make the most amount of unnecessary killings, unnecessary harvesting and well, unnecessary work to the ecosystem. Frankly speaking, humans don't really have natural predators. So maybe you can say that being vegan or being a vegetarian is an option but I personally don't feel that it's going to be enough. Because even if you're a vegetarian and you don't take meat or something like that, you still kill a whole bunch of insects while eating a whole bunch of vegetables. Insect life also matters as much as animal lives. Well, that's all I can say about the episode today. I hope you find this episode kind of useful for you. So please like, comment, and subscribe. Follow the channel on Facebook and like the Instagram page, will you? Okay then, till next time, bye-bye.